Yes, maybe uh, to start with uh, a few words about what we, Crisis Management Planning Department, do. So our first task is the strategic planning of CSDP missions and operations, basically asking the question, why the European Union has to do something, what it should do, and also with whom. And that is translated in a document that is called the Crisis Management Concept, which is put for the approval to ministers. We do that in an integrated way. That means that we have civilian and military planners. We look at the situation, not from a military or a civilian angle, but from an integrated way. The second thing we have to do is strategic reviews of our missions and operations, which is basically looking at changing strategic context. Is our mission still the best way of doing, uh, reaching our ob objectives? How is it in reaching in its objectives? And is there enough coherence with other instruments? Thirdly, it has been mentioned already before, Partnerships, the question with whom are we going to do it? Work together with partners, UN, the uh, NATO, but also countries like the United States participating in our missions in Kosovo, 40 people, but also in, in Congo. Projects are there, the uh, dialogue on crisis management, also uh, the framework participation agreements. So with that, I think CMPD is also a little bit at the core of CSDP. And um, how does it work, CSDP? In order to address that question, I, I propose to raise maybe six Challenges. The first challenge is what I would call the added value challenge. Question, why do we need CSDP? I mean, we have NATO, we have the, European, we have the United Nations, we have sometimes co coalition of the willings. This question has been looked upon uh, from very angles, very much different points of view, mostly political, mostly what I would call almost theological. Let me look at it from a more pragmatic one, an operational one, and ask you the question, if you would only have the UN and NATO, I mean, would it be covering the whole spectrum of crisis management? And my answer is no. Let me give two examples. In Georgia, for example, in 2008, I mean, the UN was in trouble, had to close down its mission. NATO was maybe not the best partner because, you know, Russians involved. And so the EU had to do the job. You for in Congo in 2006, at the time of the elections, we were requested by the United Nations to come in and put on the ground a force in order to make sure that the situation was clear and, and safe uh, because the UN couldn't mobilize quickly enough the necessary assets. And I don't think NATO was very much interested. Also looking at, for example, Atalanta, the piracy issue, uh, where I think the European Union, and we can debate that maybe later, is probably the best place to have this mix of, first of all, the naval capacity to fight piracy at sea, but also to raise uh, the necessary s support for the justice sector, for the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the penitentiary sector, but also the diplomat diplomatic and political instruments and the, the, uh, the development instruments. So I think the, U the uh, European Union has a very specific added value in the whole picture. Second challenge is, is maybe the, uh, what I would call the member states challenge. Because member states created CSDP 10 years ago, they are, uh, having also the political control of the CSDP to the political and security committee, where they ask us what we are preparing, they control our missions. They provide also the force, the staff, the capacity for the, the operations and the missions. And we have to understand that all decisions have to be taken by unanimity. And that, of course, is uh, something that uh, very much uh, constrains our action. I mean, it has to be a political consensus on a possible action. It can be a stimulating effect. Some countries take uh, initiatives in order to launch missions and operations. Others uh, have difficulty. For example, on Sahel, we have been saying quite a long time that we needed a mission and that we probably needed also a military mission. But because there was no political consensus among member states, it was not possible. So there is a certain of a tension between, on the one hand, the efficiency and the right thing to do, and on the other hand, what is political possible. Of course, I mean, sometimes it's possible to have quite a good result. Like on, on Kosovo, where five member states have not recognized uh, Kosovo, but still we have there the biggest mission uh, in, uh, in theater with executive functions uh, even going after corruption. Third challenge is what I would call the uh, comprehensive action, the comprehensive approach uh, challenge. It has been said the CSDP has already quite an history. A lot of missions, 24 missions, 80,000 or whatever people in theater, different... Um, theaters, but it was mostly the mission standing on their own. I think now what is new is that um, what is new is this comprehensive approach that we have to integrate, that we have to uh, integrate the CSDP missions and operations into the wider approach with several other instruments, uh, development, diplomacy, and, and security, and that's a challenge. It calls for more coordination, it calls for more synergies, 
And in the external action service, we have set up what is called the crisis platform for one particular crisis, the crisis management uh, board also. And at a lower level, at staff level, for example, when we prepare the crisis management concepts, we sit together with different services of the commission, geographical desks, in order to uh, prepare that. And I think it's needed because also in the field you need these uh, synergies. When we launch a mission, which is called the Regional Maritime Capacity Mission in the Horn of Africa, we train people, but we need also equipment. So this is something that we could do with the commission. Um, the fourth challenge is what I would call the process and delivery channel challenge. How does it work? I mean, uh, what is the preparation process of a CSDP mission and operation? Um, and I would make a distinction between what is the strategic level, which I just explained, uh, where we try to find an answer to why we have to do things, what and with whom. Um, coming into a crisis management concept, which has to be approved by the council. And from there starts the operational planning. The operational planning, where we have the uh, concept of operations and OPLAN, uh, and on the military side also the military strategic objectives or the uh, um, military directives. Uh, and that leads also to a decision to be taken by ministers on the launch of the operation. At that point, we have also the fourth generation, which is sometimes quite a critical uh, element, because member states will have also to bring the forces on what they have decided to launch. And then, of course, it's the conduct. The conduct, civilian missions conducted by the CPCC and the military missions conducted by the operations commander. We, when we do the strategic planning, we always involve uh, the CPCC, so the, the civil crisis management uh, structures, and also the military staff in our strategic planning. Um, it seems a little bit heavy process, all that, but it can go quick. I mean, Georgia was done in 18 days. Uh, Bunya in the time, in, uh, what was it, 2003, was done in a, in a month. So, and we're also working very much at streamlining these, uh, uh, these procedures. The last challenge, uh, or last two challenges, is the partnership challenge. I think it's, it has been raised already by Maitche. Uh, security challenges are becoming more and more complex. Resources are getting more and more scarce. So we have to do more with less. Uh, that means that we have to work better together that we have to strengthen our partnerships. I think it's a defining future, a feature for, for the future. Um, for example, one excellent uh, example of it is, is the EUTM, the European Union Training Mission in, uh, in Bihanga, in Uganda, where we train Somali security forces. Well, this is an excellent example on how we can work together. The European Union do, does the training, together with the United States paying, uh, doing the transportation from uh, Mogadishu to uh, Uganda, and also paying the stripends and AMISOM doing the, what I would call the command and control. And these are essential elements in order to make sure that when we train people, they afterwards don't become better pirates or don't become better Al-Shabaab fighters. So we have a lot of cooperation with UN. We have almost daily contacts in theater also. We have, also, of course, also worked very closely with them. But we have regular contacts with uh, DPKO. We have also a steering committee every six months. For example, the last one was on Sudan and on Somalia with the uh, UN. We have daily contacts also with NATO, both in theater. We work together in theater, but also uh, have uh, very intense contacts and staff to staff at the, the Brussels level. We work together with the African Union, but also very much with countries like Turkey, the United States, and others. And I think this seminar is an excellent uh, opportunity to develop further the partnership with the US. The last channel, challenge is the uh, capacity channel. And I will be uh, not dwelling too much on that. I think so others will do. But I think uh, it is something that, with which we are all confronted, that is the uh, decreasing budgets. And also, at the European side, some missing enablers, as has been shown in the Libya crisis. Uh, and there we have to work together. In Europe, it's called this, the this, uh, pooling and sharing. In NATO, small defense. But uh, also on the civilian side, it's quite a challenge to find enough staffing for our missions. Uh, it works until now quite well, although we have one or two gaps which, is, which are quite serious. But it's, it's uh, fourth generation is quite a challenge. Thank you.